dominated uh, mass jihads as, and I'll say this, I don't care who doesn't like it, the, the Saudi Wahhabism is very anti-black, it's very reactionary, and it seems to be the Islam that African Americans gravitate to, the kind of Islam that doesn't want to be black anymore. So you have a Christianity where people are ashamed of being black, and we found an Islam <laughs> that's not black either. We need to have a spiritual revival movement within this country where you can be a good Muslim or a good Christian, be African and proud, and you won't take the garbage anymore. If people are following the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, there's no way that you can accept injustice. If you're following Jesus, peace be upon him, you can't and will not accept social injustice. So that's the other thing we call ourselves as spiritual people, and we're not being spiritual. We need that kind of movement to clean us up, to get rid of the hedonism, the barbarism, the vulgarity, the pornography, the filth, every kind of movement that's coming where people think two men can have a baby nowadays. And by the way, Malcolm Shabazz's family would get a call of condolence from, uh, from Obama if they simply said he was gay. That's how I feel. That's how bizarre things are. Well, it... Looking at what you've said, and you said there needs to be an awakening as far as the religious communities in the United States. However, uh, Dr. Short, when we see, once again, we go back to the mainstream media and how they portray uh, these uh, Zionist Christian elements or reactionary Christian elements or reactionary Muslim elements are the ones that are portrayed to be the norm in the United States. So... What needs to be done, as you said, to get the message of the reality and the direction that we need to go and out to the average person? Well, I'll be honest with you. We have the capacity to survive. We have to decide. I will quote a passage from Scripture. Uh, I think it's uh, in Luke, but it's also in Isaiah. It says, people that have walked in darkness have seen a great light. That great light is Allah or God that we can leave Ja'aliyah or wickedness, as a, a Christian would say. Part of wickedness is social injustice, uh, bad schools. Uh, this idea that women's bodies need to be exposed, or men need to have their behinds showing. We need to begin to, first of all, redevelop our moral strength. You see, the main power that a people has is their morality. If they have no morality, if you have no moral compass of right from wrong, what is racism? What is social injustice? What is discrimination? What is sexism? If there is no right or there's no wrong. And part of what must happen, one of the things that must happen, is we must come to terms with the hijacking of American religion by Talmudism. It's not discussed, but I'm discussing it. Uh, Talmudism, and that's what I call it, because it's not Judaism, Judaism that follows the uh, Old Testament or the Tanakh. Uh, this is rife in our society. If you start looking at who's pushing pornography, who represents all this crazy stuff in the media, uh, people can get angry with me, but keep looking at the owners. Keep looking at them. It'll keep coming up the same ethnic group, whether I want to say it or not, or whether someone would call me prejudiced or not. These people have hijacked our culture. We have to kick those people who do not belong in our community and our culture out. And we should kick out anyone black who insists that we somehow have this, this uh, parasitic relationship be continued. You look at uh, certain black organizations and it's like they need someone who doesn't like us to sign on for it. If you were to talk to attorney Alton Maddox, which I recommend you do, he was told you can't make it as a black lawyer in New York without having a rabbi. So it doesn't matter if you went to Harvard, doesn't matter if you went to Yale, if you don't have someone in another group sign off on you, even other blacks won't talk to you. So a colonial relationship we must reject and be willing to suffer the consequences we need to rediscover economics. Uh, that means that we don't buy from people that hate us. We don't buy from people who don't hire from us. We must only patronize those who do with and for us. We should not attend churches. We should, we should leave the Democratic Party. In fact, 
a great sign that we're on our way to renewal is for us to boycott these, this next midterm election and watch Obama's Democratic Party be punished. We, we need to show people we don't need them, we don't want them. We should be looking at international law and looking at how we can link up with other people to demand the kind of social justice. And we also need to recognize, aside from needing your morality put together, you have to know who you are. One of the greatest things that you can do to anyone is to destroy their identity, like the women who were kidnapped in Ohio for 10 years who got the Stockholm Syndrome. They were so used to getting raped by the Latino group until they were afraid to run away. African American people must regain some sense of their identity. First of all, they must recognize that they are children of God like anyone else, by none. And it doesn't matter who has the guns or the money or the majority. If you stand up, it's very hard for anyone to ride your back. If you have people riding your back, it's already been someone else can get there if the original rider moves. If this is the beginning, is to control what we can control. And in particular, we need to focus an emphasis on two groups, our women and our children. And then from there, our young men. We need to work on educating every single solitary child to know how to read and write. We also need to attack, in particular, one of the most insidious forces in, in, in this country is the population or the eugenics movement that is where we are killing almost 300,000 of our people every year, where our population is growing at 1%, which is not sufficient for replacement, and has been this case for 10 years. We must get rid of Planned Parenthood. We must turn our backs on all, and particularly the Democratic Party, that, is, that sees the slaughter of black children and the building of jails and the promotion of uh, basically homosexuality as the greatest human right of all as a good agenda for black people's development. Okay. It has nothing to do with our freedom. It has nothing to do with us advancing and at least regaining our moral sense of ourselves. All right. Well, Dr. Short, you, you've uh, made several points and uh, very adamantly uh, expressing yourself. I, I want to look at, because I'm, I'm almost out of time, in general, with the uh, situation, the status quo, being a, many times people would say quite dangerous for those who speak out for what is right. And you are quite a spokesperson for human rights in the United Small States. Potatoes. Small potatoes. Well, let, let's look at, uh, do you fear for your life? Um... I'll tell you what uh, one of the scriptures says. The scriptures Christ said, Fear not he who can kill the body, but fear he who can kill the body and cast the soul into hell. Uh, uh, we also told for God we live and for God we die. Our, our ancestors used to believe that the more we get away from uh, believing that life is a struggle, and somehow we can just get a nice job and have a nice house and not fight, this has nothing to do with the Christian faith or the Muslim faith. The same concept of jihad that Muslims have, Christians have. Uh, what happens when Muslims stop following the five pillars? What happens when Christians stop seeking to do the right thing? Jesus made it a question. What happens to a salt when it loses its savor? You throw it away. A uh, people that, that lose their character, lose their sense of God and purpose, become assimilated or destroyed. So uh, I'm not afraid. I mean, if I've lived a long time, I'm surprised that I've lived this long. I'm not trying to die. But my father lived to be almost 70. But he ultimately died in part from complications from being exposed possibly to depleted uranium when the Pentagon got hit by a missile that I suspect, not a plane. And then he got uh, poisoned because he got poor medical care when he was in the hospital. And he got poisoned by the pharmaceutical companies that he trusted that made deadly drugs. You can conform or you can be careful and you die just as soon in this society. I wake up and if I were to die tomorrow, not that I want to, but I did what I felt was right. I think that a lot of people are, are living dead. They're already dead. They've just managed to cling to nothing. And in reality, uh, this is what's killing us. No one wants to sacrifice for the greater good of our people's survival. So, no, I'm not a brave person, not a tough guy, but I have to live 
happily and, and be able to speak my mind. Frederick Douglass did it, Malcolm X did it, some lived long, some lived a short period of time, but I've seen a lot of miserable, old, broken black people who never stood up for anything, and because they didn't, the suffering continued. Okay. So if God gives me a long life, bless God. If he takes it, it's his. I need to remind you, I drowned when I was five years old. And God preserved me and let me live, what, another 40 years? I wasn't supposed to be here uh, in a swimming pool many years ago. I was underwater about maybe 20 minutes. So God has let me have, I mean, I've had all this time that he gave me that I, normally people wouldn't have. So if he takes it, isn't it his? Aren't you and I God's? And when he's done with us, we go back to him. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Short, for being with us. And we hope for justice uh, as far as the situation with uh, Malcolm Shabazz and so many others who have lost their lives in this struggle. Thank you so much for being with us right here at NAS TV. God bless. Inshallah, we'll talk again. Okay. Thank you. Inshallah. Thank you so much for being with us on this special uh, program looking at the life of uh, Malcolm Shabazz and in general human rights in the United States.